who are taking a live look at the border between Israel and Gaza right there as we are continuing to follow some breaking news after three Israelis were shot and killed Sunday at the border crossing between the West Bank and Jordan in what appeared to be an attack linked to the 11th month war in Gaza. That is according to Israeli officials. The military said the gunmen approached the crossing from the Jordanian side in a truck and opened fire at Israeli security forces who killed the assailant in a shootout. It said the three people killed were Israeli civilians. The crossing over the Jordan River, also known as the King Hussein Bridge, is mainly used by Palestinians and international tourists, as well as for cargo shipments. Authorities in Israel and Jordan said the crossing was closed until further notice, and Israel later announced the closure of both its land crossings with Jordan. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu condemned the attack and linked it to Israel's larger conflict with Iran and and allied militant groups, including Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon. In Gaza, meanwhile, an Israeli airstrike killed five people early Sunday, including two women, two children, and a senior official in this civilian defense. That is according to first responders who operate under the Hamas-run government. Now, the United States, Qatar, and Egypt continue to try and broker a ceasefire and the return of the hostages still being held captive by Hamas, but the negotiations have been reportedly bogged down. Meanwhile, the Justice Department has announced the unsealing of terrorism, murder, conspiracy, and sanction evasion charges against six senior leaders of Hamas. The charges relate to the defendant's central roles in planning, supporting, and perpetrating the terrorist atrocities that Hamas committed in Israel on October 7th, involving the murders and kidnappings of countless civilians, including American citizens. The defendants are either deceased or remain at large. And to speak more about this, I do want to bring in Harley Lippman, who is a media expert analyst in U.S. policy and global dynamics at Harley Lippman. Harley, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Absolutely. So before we delve into the unsealed charges against Hamas, I do want to start off with the breaking news when it comes to the three Israelis killed at the border between the West Bank and Jordan. For those who may not be familiar with this area, what is the significance of this border crossing? This is where Palestinians uh, come into Israel, uh, even though uh, Israel has put a stop to a lot of that because uh, they they would come and have legal work visas, but Israel feels they could be a Trojan horse, so that has been curtailed a lot. But this is a major place of interaction, and this could really spread. What Israel has always been worried about is that what's taking place in Gaza will spread to the West Bank. And that's the heart of Israel's proactive response to going after terrorist cells. They're not going after people having a Sunday picnic. They're going after hardened terrorists where they have evidence that they're planning to kill innocent people. Uh, that's the reason why they're going after those individuals. Uh, and that's what's been happening in the West Bank. So Israel is hoping to curtail and contain any uprising in the West Bank. So I do want to speak to the fact that these three Israelis who were killed are, were civilians and not soldiers. So when it comes to the significance of that, and as we uh, take a look at the ongoing conflicts that are happening right now in that region, you know, what is the significance of that? Well, it, it speaks to the heart of what the motives are uh, of Palestinians, by and large, which is to kill every Jew. You know, I, I think that people really have not grasped this the, the real significance of what's going on in the Middle East now. This is not a, a war over uh, a border dispute or over an energy crisis or, or, or something of that nature. This is a war of survival of the Jews. This, is, this, this goes back to the Holocaust of the, the 1940s. The, the, there is there are people there who want to kill every single Jewish man, woman, and child. That's a Nazi-like Holocaust. There's no other way to put it. And this is this is enshrined in the um, uh, in in the 
in what ha Hamas calls their um, uh, their teachings and in their manifesto. They want to kill every single Jew in Israel and anyone associated with Jews in Israel. As you may recall, they've even captured people from Asia and other countries and killed them. So this is, and, and, and even getting broader than that, while it always starts with the Jews, it never ends with the Jews. Jews are the canary in the coal mine. So the significance here is that while they're starting with the Jews, this is part of a global conflict where we are in denial uh, between two things. One is savagery versus civilization. No matter what your grievance is, you don't behead babies and torture 85-year-old grandmothers. Uh, no matter what your grievance could be, you don't do that. You don't mass rape uh, women at a peace music festival. So that's one theme, savagery versus civilization. The second theme is that this is about China, Russia, Iran, and to some extent North Korea really trying to change the world and put, them on, put more of the world under their control and push back on the one power, the United States, that could do something about it and try to weaken the United States for the ultimate goal of destroying the United States. Harley, you were talking about really that this is a global conflict and not a regional one. And, and I was interested in your perspective when it comes to ongoing ceasefire negotiations. Uh, you know, there's been mounting pressure internationally when it comes to uh, getting a ceasefire negotiation. Hamas has refused to come to the table and agree to some of these sticking points. So when it comes to looking at the war in the future, you know, what is that? That landscape what does that look like well it's going to be very difficult uh, because you know Hamas wants to survive above all so they don't want to agree to any temporary ceasefire of any kind because they know Israel will come back even stronger uh, so they want a permanent ceasefire because they want to keep their power and continue to murder innocent Israelis where Israel obviously wants their hostages back but they don't want a temporary ceasefire because they know, like Hitler, they have to uh, as eliminate as much of Hamas as they can because Hamas has promised to come back and kill more and more Jews, four, five, six times. They've said that. That's an, an exact quote. So that's what that is. And I think we, we're not recognizing that this is a war. The Department of Justice just indicted six Hamas leaders which is somewhat of a joke, because of the six, three are dead, and the other three are unlikely to ever be brought to justice. And it's it's too little, too late. Justice delayed is justice denied, especially for the families of those innocent victims. Hamas has been killing Americans since 1997, and we have not done anything about it. Hamas has killed 40 Americans in their attack on Israel on October 7th. 40 Americans have been killed. What has the United States done? And then when Hamas recently executed a number of the Israeli innocent hostages, I think it was six of them, and one of them is an American, what does President Biden do? He blames Bibi Netanyahu. I mean, this is crazy, isn't it? Hamas kidnaps innocent Israelis you know, executes them because Israeli troops were nearby and Biden blames Bibi Netanyahu. It's it's really bizarre. And the reason why he blamed Bibi Netanyahu because he says Bibi Netanyahu would not give up what is called the Philadelphia Corridor, which is between Gaza and Egypt. So, uh, and, and Israel's right not to give up control over that because there are tunnels that go from Egypt to Gaza, they go right into Rafa. Rafa goes right into Egypt, that city. People don't realize that. So, and you have all these, now you may say the Egyptian government won't allow um, these weapons going to Hamas. Maybe not, but there's so much money to be made by corrupt border guards that huge amounts, they have huge tunnels between Rafa and Egypt that go through the Philadelphia corridor. And it's just been discovered that the, the head of Hamas, Sinwar, is, has a plan to take the hostages and Sinwar and himself and his family have them be smuggled out of Gaza through the Philadelphia corridor to Egypt 
and then to Iran, which is like bringing the hostages to Auschwitz. I mean, they, it, as bad as it is in Gaza, if they go to Iran, they're never coming back. Never. So, you know, this is this is what has been discovered. So it, it, it's not that Bibi's wants the war to continue as being unreasonable. I know there are a lot of theories about that. All I know is that the Philadelphia corridor is indispensable for a nation's defense and trying to get back their own innocent civilians. Whether that nation is called Thailand, Bolivia, or 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 Spain, it doesn't matter which one, any nation would be behaving the same way. And, and, and the other point to make about uh, what the Department of Justice did is they're making something into a crime which is a war. They indicted these people as it's a crime, as if it's uh, like a felony. That's not what's going on here. This is war, and we need to respond what you do in a war. And unless you want to be defeated and subjugated, you have to win the war. And, you know, and that's what it is. So by the Department of Justice reducing this to indicting people as if it's a like a, a, a civil crime or a, or a criminal crime, let's say, and not an act of war, I think it just misses the whole point. Arlie, before we let you go, any last thoughts that you would like to share with our live now from Fox viewers? Yeah, I think the other troubling part of, of the Middle East is uh, the way we're treating our friends Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Bahrain. You know, they fought against the Houthis in Saudi Arabia, and we we argued with them, and we were against them when they were ahead of the curb. And now America and European nations say to those three Arab nations, help us fight against the Houthis and help us if we need to deter Iran. And then Saudi Arabia, the UAE and Bahrain said, okay, we'll do that. But if we do that, and then Iran and the Houthis take revenge and attack us because we helped you, will you defend us? And the European nation said, we will not. And they asked America, will you defend us? And the Americans said, we will not. Well, that's not fair. I mean, you can't have it both ways. We're not treating our allies as as equal and fair partners. And they get that message. And that's why they're looking at other alternatives. And, and they're reliable, strong, good allies of the United States. We don't want to push them into the arms of China. But we continually do that by being unfair to them and ignoring legitimate basic needs that they have that are very much aligned with the United States anyway. Arlie, as always, we appreciate you joining us here on Live Now from Fox. Thank you.